Hi, everybody. Welcome to English Digest. I'm Tom. Hi, I'm Stephanie. It's our discovery unit for today, as we near the end of the month of August. Okay, so summer is over, and it's time to get down to the business of learning things. And of course, you're tuning into our program. To improve your English listening skills and your reading skills while you're at it, and hopefully also your writing and your speaking skills. And one way to improve all those things is to watch TV, and you can watch the Discovery Channel. And we're talking about a program on the Discovery Channel called Street Science. And it's season two, and this program is all about having science at your fingertips. Uh, it kind of、uh, has a teacher on the show that explains really complicated scientific、um, ideas to the audience. This might be a good show for me. I'm not a big science fan, to be honest, but.、Uh, The guy who teaches Kevin Delaney, he's described as being a science magician.、Um, sounds like he does kind of、uh, teach in an exciting way. We're going to talk about that, and like we always do, we're going to spend a couple of days on this particular show, Street Science. They're in season two, so I'm sure some of our listeners have watched season one already. I haven't seen it, but we'll、uh, dig into this. We're going to read through first, guys, and then we'll be back. Despite our differences, all humans are born with a natural curiosity about our surroundings. However, the desire to dig deeper into the elements that make up our world often disappears after too many dull lectures and confusing calculations. As a result, few people choose scientific career paths. In fact, a 2015 UNESCO report stated. That there were only 7.8 million researchers currently working worldwide. That's less than 0.1 percent of the global population. Kevin Delaney, the host of Discovery Channel's Street Science Season Two, hopes to change that. Kevin D, described by some as a science magician, explains complicated scientific principles in an exciting way. Despite his nickname, there's no magic involved. And he has the latest in digital camera technology to prove that what he does is real. Kevin D's team carries out crazy experiments using cameras to slow down their outcomes and give us the opportunity to witness details that usually go unseen. The team also sets up public experiments determined to spark the interest of nearby people with some clever demonstrations. On the first episode. Kevin D and his team members learn how to build wearable fireball launchers. The team members building the launchers have two rules to follow: the fireball must hit a target 12 meters away, and the target must catch fire. Engineer Nick Householder and Kevin Kohler, a YouTuber who goes by the nickname the Backyard Scientist, are both up for the task and hurry off to start building their launchers. Let's look at the title first, guys. We've got、uh, Street Science season two. This is the second season. I wanted to mention because I've been watching British TV shows on Netflix lately. They don't say season one, season two. They say series one, series two. So it's a little different. We don't do that in the states. We call it season, season one, season two.、Um, here we've got this particular show that's about science at your fingertips. If something's at your fingertips, and it can't be fingertip, guys, it has to be plural. At someone's Fingertips just means it's really convenient, very close. You can just grab it. So you want、uh, these days. I have to say, we all have dictionaries at our fingertips. Our phones are really great with、uh, looking up words and sentences and things like that. If you want to get on the internet, your phone's at your fingertips, which has the internet, which is really convenient. And I guess this means this is user-friendly science, science for the rest of us, and not science that is only understood by a bunch of nerds and eggheads. <laughs> so let's get to it here. Let's talk about the first paragraph. It says, "Despite our differences, all humans are born with a natural curiosity about our surroundings." And ladies and gentlemen, that is called survival. You need to be curious about all the things around you; otherwise, you're not going to survive. 
survive in the world.、Mm. So, despite our differences, even though people are different, we have different nationalities, different races, genders,、uh, body types, etc., etc. But despite those differences, even though we have those differences, still. All humans have this same natural-born curiosity about our surroundings. So here, curiosity、mm. just means when you just want to know more about something, you have a strong desire, a strong will to know more about something. Curiosity. Gee, I'm so curious. About what just happened there, I'd like to find out more. Let me ask some questions. That's right. So it says here, however, the desire to dig deeper, to get you know more in-depth information into the elements, elements of the world, these scientific elements, things、uh, that make up our world, often disappears after too many boring. That's what dull means. Boring lectures、uh, from your professors or teachers and confusing. Calculations, calculations would be、uh, calculations in math,、uh, those things that we have to often solve in math class. Now, I wanted to mention here. This is a good example of when the subject and the verb are spread out so far. You have to keep track of the noun or the subject. So, look at here. In this sentence, the subject is desire. But then we go on to add more words to dig deeper into the elements that make up our world. Often disappears. When Tom was reading this out loud, I thought, "Oh, is that correct?" And I had to look back at the sentence, and it is correct. Your verb here is disappears.、Mm. So desire and disappears have to match up there. You're not、uh, conjugating your verb for make up our world or elements. It's desire. The desire often disappears. So you got to keep. Track of your subject and your verb in a sentence. Sometimes it's a little complicated.、Uh, before I move on to or let you go on, Tom,、mm -hmm. make up here just means how something、um, is put together, what it's comprised of. That's another word, comprised of,、uh, to make up our world. So lots of different elements have come together to create our world,、um, and sometimes the desire to know more about that. Often just kind of escapes us when we have to sit through a lot of boring lectures. A lecture is when a teacher or a parent is just talking to you, and you don't say anything. You just have to listen. And if you're in class, you have to remember that stuff for a test. And if you're at home and your parent is lecturing you, you're probably in trouble. Uh, I'm thinking here that a lot of college professors are getting a bad rap here. I guess it、uh, is、uh, dependent on the individual.、Yes. I was interested in science, so gee, those、uh, guys who taught the geology class and the guy who taught the astronomy class, I thought they were、But、fascinating they lecturers.、Oh, whereas, if you don't have a science interest, if you're not interested in science, you probably will find those lectures、mm. to be dull and boring. But about mathematics, I have a bone to pick with math teachers. Here, because I can relate to this idea of confusing calculations. <laughs>、uh, we've got calculations、yeah. in algebra. We've got them in calculus and geometry, trigonometry. They've all got these different functions or these calculations when you try to reach a particular figure through mathematics. And they would draw all these formulas on the chalkboard, and it would take them twenty minutes to explain something. <laughs> and then at the end of it, I said, "Okay." Why do we need to do that? Why, how can you apply that to the real world?、Yeah. And basically, they never told me that. I just couldn't figure out why we have to learn all these formulas or these calculations. So, indeed, they were quite confusing for me. Ah,、uh, me too.、Uh, but we all have to go through math classes. I've discovered that in Taiwan, you guys are really good at mathematics.、Uh, good for you. We need a lot of that in today's world. So, as a result, few people—not very many people. Choose scientific career paths,、uh, either as teachers or maybe they work in engineering or whatever.、Um, a lot of people avoid that science field. I don't think that's true in Taiwan. I think we've got a lot of really brilliant、uh, people here, especially when you're talking about math. Now, in、uh, in 2015, there was a UNESCO report. That's how you say U N E S C O. We actually say this as a word, although it is an acronym, meaning those letters stand for full words.、Uh, it was、uh, put out in 2015, and it said there were only 7.8 million researchers 
currently working worldwide. I'm shocked by this. This really surprises me. That's a very low number. In fact, that's less than zero point one percent. That's how you say that out loud, guys. Zero point one percent of the global population. Global here just means all over the world. Global is the adjective form of the noun globe. And you could probably also drop the zero there. You could probably say point one percent of the world population. You could say that too. But saying the zero is equally acceptable. And indeed, that's a pretty small number.、Mm-hmm. So maybe it's because of those dull lectures or because of those confusing calculations. But enter Kevin Delaney. Okay, he's the host of Discovery Channel's Street Science Season Two, and he hopes to change that. He doesn't want People to be turned off to science. Maybe he'll turn you on to science, there, Stephanie. Since you said you're not really into science that much, so maybe、yeah. if you watch this fella, he will change your mind. And we're going to shorten his name to just Kevin D、okay. here. Kevin D, described by some as a science magician, explains complicated scientific principles in an exciting way. So he's got a nickname here. The science magician. He just kind of has a certain magic with science. I guess that's because he's able to explain these complicated scientific concepts or these scientific principles in an exciting way. If something is complicated, that means it involves all sorts of different parts and different ideas and different concepts. Like if you want to repair the engine of your car, it's not so easy as just tightening a screw because the engine. Is quite complicated. You've got、yeah. the the cylinders and the pistons and the combustion chamber and fuel injection and all that stuff to think about. It's quite complicated. Yeah, so that can be complicated. A problem can be complica- complicated. Maybe in your life between a friend and and you, maybe you're having problems, and someone says, "Oh, just." Tell her you're sorry, and you could say, "Oh, it's kind of complicated." Or if someone's complicated, it means、um, they're they're kind of hard to figure out. They're not easy to understand. It's not easy to understand their personality. Oh, he's kind of complicated. Not easy to be friends with, perhaps. Right now, guys, we're going to listen to our Chinese teacher, and then we'll be back to continue talking about Street Science Season Two. Hi everyone, my name is Jenny. 今天我们要看的是第十六单元。好，我们今天呢要看的是一个哎要上映的电视节目，在 Discovery 频道上，它的名称叫做 Street Science， 街头玩科学。好，这个节目呢已经进入了第二季。那我们提到科学，可能不是每个人都很有兴趣，所以他这边提到 Despite our differences， 嗯。Despite, 尽管，哎，我们人人都不同。不过，我们看看大家，其实大概有一种天生的好奇心，只是不是每个人。都喜欢科学，因为上课的时候总是听了一堆的啊、呃、老师的课程说明，或者是算了一堆的数字，所以就没兴趣了。但是这个节目就是让你知道，科学其实是。At your fingertips, 意思就是说，它是随手可得的，在你生活周遭，哎，处处都有科学。好，那我们来看这个主角啊，他其实也就是 Discovery 频道上面这个街头玩科学的主持人。好，他的名字叫 Kevin。这个 Kevin 他其实他基本上就是一个 science magician， science magician 也就是所谓的科学魔术师。哎，这别人都是这样说他的。这边提到 Kevin， 我们称他为 Kevin D， described by some as a science magician。注意到这边的句构。逗点后面这边隔开的这一部分，也就是用来补充说明他的身份跟角色。很多人都说他是一个科学魔术师，他被描述成为是一个科学魔术师。注意到介系词 as。We're going to take a quick break. Stay tuned. We'll be right back. 
Okay, everybody. Let's continue with our lesson. Remember, the subject for today's program is Street Science Season Two,、mm. which is a program on the Discovery Channel. Discover your world, and、uh, we introduce the host of the program, Kevin Delaney, and he's trying to change this idea that most of us are turned off to science because we saw or heard too many dull lectures about science, and we learned too many confusing calculations. In our math classes, he's trying to make sense of it all. He wants to make science user friendly. He wants to make it accessible to the common person.、Mm. So yes, he wants to change that. And he's also known as the science magician. He can explain those complicated scientific ideas, and he does it in an interesting way, in an exciting way. And you want to just keep on watching and tune in again next week. Now here it says, despite his nickname, there's no magic involved, and he has the latest in digital camera technology to prove. That what he does is real. Now, when we think of a magician, we think of someone who has special powers,、mm -hmm. or at least they look like they have special powers.、Yeah. Like,、uh, let's see,、uh, David Copperfield is a famous magician, and who's that one guy who you know locks himself inside a frozen block? Isn't David, it Bain? David, David, David Blaine. David, David Blaine. David Blaine. There you go. He's a magician, and there are of course new magicians coming out all the time. But、uh, of course, they don't actually have any special powers. Yeah. And here. Uh, Kevin D doesn't really have any special powers, but he does act like a magician here because he's able to explain these things. But even though he has this nickname, there's no magic involved with what he does. But he does use digital camera technology. Maybe he uses time lapse photography or high speed shutters、mm. on his camera to show that what he's doing is actually real and it's not magic. It says here Kevin D's team carries out crazy experiments. If you carry something out or carry out something, that's a verb phrase.、Uh, it means you put it into operation, you execute it, you、um, accomplish it, you complete it. Usually, we use、uh, "carry out" to talk about experiments, or you might have、uh, maybe you're a cop, a policeman, and you carry out an investigation. So, carry out here, or maybe you just carry out your plans until they're completed. So, here he carries. Out crazy experiments, which probably means they're fun to watch, using cameras to slow down their outcomes and give us the opportunity to witness details that usually go unseen or you can't really see them. Typically,、uh, an outcome is just a result. I typically use outcome as a non-count noun.、Uh, I would say slow down their outcome, but outcomes is okay too. You've got different experiments here,、um, and so it lets the viewer or the viewing audience, because you're watching TV,、uh, see how it really. Works. It's、uh, slow enough that you can see the process taking place in front of your eyes. Right, and he's probably using、uh, something similar to time lapse photography or high speed photography using a video camera. Yeah, good. Most video cameras shoot at what thirty frames a second. Some of the newer ones can shoot at sixty、uh, frames per second. But he's got probably、hmm. special cameras that can shoot up to a thousand frames a second or ten thousand frames per second. And then you can look at each into each individual. Individual frame、cool. and try to figure out exactly what's going on there. You can see the outcomes. You can see the results. That you usually could not see, and they're usually unseen. Now the team also sets up public experiments, which means experiments that、uh, anybody can see out in public. Maybe they do it in a city square or on a street or something. And he's determined to spark the interest of nearby people with some clever demonstrations. So maybe he goes down to Seaman Ding or something like that.、Uh, sometimes you see street performers down there, people juggling or playing the guitar or something. In his case, maybe he goes down there to show some. Experiments to people because he is determined. He really wants to spark the interest of nearby people. So here we've got the word spark. Oftentimes, spark is a noun.、Uh, sparks are little, tiny, little fires. Yeah.、Uh, fire stars, as you call 
them in Chinese. We don't <laughs>、okay. say that in English, of course. But、uh, you've got spark plugs in your car. Maybe you've got a spark plug in your scooter. And here, sparks is excuse me, spark is being used as a verb. That just means to trigger or to get the interest of people going, to get them interested, to start that interest. Yeah, and it、uh, he has some it, here. It says he has some clever demonstrations.、Uh, when you demonstrate something, guys, you usually show someone how something works or、um, what it can do. We have a lot of food demonstrations in the grocery stores here.、You、go to a supermarket, especially the bigger ones where they import food. They often have. Uh, either ladies or men standing at the end of aisles,、uh, giving you samples of their food. Those are、uh, food demonstrations, or maybe you've gone to a cooking demonstration. I love cooking demonstrations. I watch a lot of them on TV. I must say.、Uh, well, he shows how these scientific、uh, things work by giving people a look at the demonstration. So he shows how it works. On the first episode, Kevin D and his team members learn how to build wearable fireball launchers. This sounds dangerous to me.、Uh, so they're putting it on. It's wearable, so they can put it on like clothes. And a launcher is anything that kind of Um, set something going. A launcher.、Um, we had kind of a rocket launcher when I was young. That if you pulled on it, the rocket would go up in the air.、Uh, so if it launches something, it just sends something up usually. So it starts moving. But they're wearing fireball launchers. That sounds scary. <laughs> it does something that sends balls of fire through the air. And the team members building the launchers have two rules to follow. Okay, they <laughs>、okay. they must meet two requirements. The first one is the fireball must hit a target twelve meters away. That's、uh, kind of a far distance there. Yeah, maybe、definitely. they're trying to build some kind of new weapon or something like that. But first of all, it's got to fly through the air and hit a target that is twelve. Meters away, and the second requirement is that the target must catch fire. So、mm. they launch that fireball twelve meters away. It hits a target, and then the target has to start on fire. Okay, so we've got an engineer、uh, here, Nick Householder, and also Kevin Kohler. That's how you say that name.、Um, he's a YouTuber who goes by the nickname the Backyard Scientist. They're both up for the task and hurry off to start building their launches. So Nick is the engineer, and Kevin is a YouTuber. Which means he has his own YouTube channel, which is very popular these days. You can make some money、uh, by、uh, the commercials or the advertisements that are run on your channel. If you're an engineer, guys, it means、uh, you have studied in school probably for quite a while, and、uh, you know how to design and construct and maintain things like engines and machines, or big, big structures like roads, railroads, bridges.、Uh, they hire. Engineers to do some of that stuff, and your math is excellent if you're an engineer. Uh, it better be. I've got、uh, a family of engineers. At least my older brothers、uh -huh. are both engineers.、Uh, oh, they like that stuff.、Uh, huh? Eric is a chemical engineer,、oh. and Scott is a civil engineer. But、uh, I did not follow in their footsteps. I just studied broadcasting and film production. But in any case, we've got this engineer, Nick Householder,、mm. and then we've got Kevin Kohler again, who is the backyard scientist. They are both up for the task. They're ready and willing to do what they're supposed. To do to make these fireball launchers, and they hurry off to start building their launchers. And I guess we're going to have to wait until our next program to find out if they're successful or not. I wanted to mention this is a really popular slang phrase. Up for something? If you're up for something, it means you want to do it. So someone could say, "Hey, you want to go to a movie tonight?" Yeah, I'm up for it. Yeah, that sounds great. I'm up for it. So. We'll use that quite often, so you need to kind of learn that one up for something. So they're up for the task, and they're hurrying off to start building their launchers. While they do that, we're going to listen to our Chinese teacher. 好，我们继续来看。那当然 ，Discovery 频道的这个节目呢，嗯，应该是说起来蛮好玩的。那我们提到了主持人 Kevin D， 嗯，他有一个 nickname， 也就是 Science Magician， 科学魔术师。那这样子的一个绰号，嗯，好像表示说他会玩魔术吗？错了，哎，尽管有这个绰号，又用到 despite 
，记得哦 ，despite 是个介系词，后面。一定是接名词，而不是接子句。所以，如果你看到 although， 哎，虽然它也是一样的中文解释，但是 despite 词类上是接系词 ，although 是一个连接词。这也就是为什么你看到这一句里面，它接的 his nickname， 那只是一个名词而已。好喽，那继续看。他说，虽然有这个绰号，它根本不是玩魔术的。There's no magic involved. 我们当然说了这么多，都是谈这个主持人。那这个主持人呢，他是有一个 team 的，也就是说，他有一个团队，他们一起做这个节目。嗯，当然，他们的目标，哎，就是用科技。他们用了 camera， 也就是摄影机，然后把这个过程记录下来，然后让观众们可以去目睹一些平常你可能只是用肉眼看，哎，看不到的细节。好，我们注意到这个句勾里面，他说到 details 细节 that usually go unseen， go unseen 就是哎，可能是你没看到的。当然，为什么用 unseen？ 是因为它是补语。我们提到了这些细节是没有被看到的，所以当然要用被动的 P P unseen。再来，我们来看看，嗯，当然，既然是一个电视节目，就要提到节目内容了。第一集的节目内容有什么好看的呢？ Kevin D 跟他的团队，他们呢这一次是要学习怎么打造这种很有趣的叫做“哎 ，wearable fireball launchers”， 它是一种火球发射器，可以穿戴式的火球发射器。好，那这个团队里面有一组人，他们就接受了这个挑战。这个这两位人士，他们分别是 Nick。Householder 还有 Kevin Kohler， 所以我们就称这个另第二位 Kevin 叫 Kevin K。Kevin K 他其实是一个 YouTuber， 哎，他呢外号在大家知道的就叫做 The Backyard Scientist。好，我们说一个人他有什么外号，当然会用到 nickname， 但是说他。一般人家都这样叫他，所以你说 Who goes by the nickname？ 也就是人家都是这样称呼他的。好，我们今天的讲解就到这边结束，谢谢大家。That's it for today, guys. That's day one of our discovery unit on street science. We're in season two.、Uh, you might want to check your TV and see if you can get a look at this. Kevin Delaney. There's Nick Householder. Kevin Kohler. Sounds like a fun show. We're going to keep talking about it in our next program. Well, we hope you'll join us then. For English Digest, I'm Stephanie, and I'm Tom. Goodbye. See ya.